Hey guys, welcome back. So with getting back into Avengers Assemble for part four, we continue to get more answers to the questions that seemed like they were ignored heading into this fight for the multiverse. And also I wanna talk about why the heroes of Earth 616 are so important, which is pretty much the same reason in this story as it is in many others. So with that said, let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so for this one, we jump from Infinity's End and return back to Earth in the prehistoric era, where the fight continues between the Avengers and the multiversal masters of evil. And as this starts, we get this narration from Tony Stark, with him talking about how over multiple millions of years, there's been five mass extinction events and how the fight they're fighting right now could be number six. But also he says that his armor's internal clock is telling him that this fight has been going for nine days straight, which for him feels like months cause he hasn't had any sleep, but he was knocked out unconscious a couple times, which I guess is the next best thing. But as we dive back into the fight, we get this moment where Tony goes for King Killmonger prying open his helmet so that Thor, Captain Marvel, and Odin can go for the head, cause otherwise King Killmonger's Asgardian and Wakandan hybrid destroyer armor is showing no signs of taking damage. So at this point, <laughs> nine days later, they figure it's face time. And this method proves to be very effective with King Killmonger taking a ton of damage from the inside out. But even still, he begins to recover at an insane rate. So it's here where the Iron Fist steps in with the cameo brutality, making good use of this opportunity that was made by Tony and the others to light up the weakened King Killmonger faster than he could recover. And at the same time, he kind of messed up too because he didn't think that the Iron Fist was going to do much of anything. And if he were at full strength, perhaps not. But she caught him lacking severely. And now he's out here leaking. And just after this, in a moment of downtime, Tony hears a familiar voice calling his name coming from a nearby cave. So he rushes in to see what it is without mentioning to the others that he's stepping off to do a side mission. But eventually in this cave, Tony finds the empty armor of the Iron Inquisitor, where out from behind it, the creator of this armor and the Iron Inquisitor himself, Earth 4111 Howard Stark, comes out with his hands up telling Tony that it's him, his father. And right off the bat, Tony's skeptical for obvious reasons. And not just because he knows that his father's dead, but also because a while back, Mephisto played this trick on him, where he told Tony that his father sold him, sold Tony to Mephisto, which is something that I wanna talk a little bit more about in just a moment. But again, Tony has his doubts, and he thinks that this is just another one of Mephisto's cheap tricks. But this Howard Stark, the Iron Inquisitor, he's initially upfront with Tony, and he tells him that he is indeed a Howard from another Earth, which means that their blood is still the same. But when this Howard lets Tony know that he had made a deal with Mephisto back on his earth that bound his soul, which is also true, but he fails to mention that the deal required him to kill his own son, the Tony Stark of Earth 4111. And he ends up twisting the story around by telling Tony that Mephisto wanted him to kill him. But instead, Howard tells Tony that he wants him to join him so that the future can be reshaped by them. And all Tony has to do is take his hand. But Tony refuses by popping the old man with a repulsor blast with Tony more or less telling the Inquisitor that he must have thought that this was gonna go something like Star Wars, where he would just pop up and be like, join me, Luke, and together we'll bring order to the galaxy, <laughs> which is very much what it felt like. But the Inquisitor lets Tony know that not only was the offer real, but it was also Mephisto's idea to try to wheel Tony in. So he hits Tony with an EMP, rendering his armor useless. And from there, the two of them just duke it out. But from here, I also wanna mention something that's kind of been brushed over up to this point. Cause I think it's one of the most important details for this whole series. Cause at the time when Mephisto played his quote unquote trick on Tony Stark, when we got the story, The Last Temptation of Tony Stark, Iron Man. At the end of that story, we got a conversation between the Iron Inquisitor and Mephisto, where this same Howard Stark told Mephisto that he knew 616 Tony wouldn't give in. And at that time, Mephisto told the Iron Inquisitor that he knew Tony wouldn't make a deal, but he did this so that he can sow doubt within Tony Stark that will ripple outward through the pink membranes that separate the worlds and all the Tony Starks would feel it, whether they knew it or not. 
which is really the answer to the question about Earth 616 and why it's so important, because the things that happen on Earth 616 echo throughout the multiverse, making variants an easier target, with them inheriting the doubt or the addictions, amongst a number of other traits that originate from their Earth 616 counterpart, which is also the reason why Mephisto told the Doom above all that he wanted to save Earth 616 for last. But going back to the fight, it's here with the Black Skull says that he's no longer holding back and he's going to let the symbiote take full control, which causes him to turn into a more Venom-like version of the Black Skull. But the Black Skull's moment of glory is cut short when Captain America picks up his blistering hot shield and takes him down, followed by Agamotto using the fiery bands of Malagoom to hold him. But it doesn't end here, because the symbiote just ends up leaving him, only to then make its way over to Kid Thanos as he then transforms into symbiote kid Thanos, with him taking on a more adult form, kind of like what we've seen with Dylan and Bren in the Venom series, almost like these symbiote kids just can't wait to grow up, because as soon as they get a symbiote, they're grown. But nonetheless, symbiote kid Thanos, he's a problem, and it eventually takes nearly everybody to fight him. Meanwhile, inside the cave, Tony's fighting his father from another reality for the fate of human history. And deep down inside, Tony knew that it would all come down to this someday. And with Tony saying this and not being serious, just being Tony, the Inquisitor tells him that this has really come down to Iron Man being soft, which right there just sets off something in Tony and he goes off, gaining the upper hand, balling it up and dropping it right down on his daddy's head. And at the same time, we also got Jane and Maya Lopez going up against the Dark Phoenix, with Maya telling Jane not to hold anything back because the Dark Phoenix is powerful enough to scorch the Earth that she wanted to. And for a moment here, with both Jane and Maya getting knocked back, we get a moment of some connecting tissue that Jason Aaron's throwing in here, with us seeing the other Avengers from across time that the modern day Avengers met on their way to 1 million BC, with some heroes in the future and some even further in the past, sensing Maya at the Genesis point, so they send her help back through that passage so that she can hit the Dark Phoenix hard. And I mean, this is one of those parts where I'm like, okay, like this little piece right here, we could have did without this. Cause I know we got the whole Genesis point thing going on and I'm sure Jason Aaron wanted to tie back in the other Avengers that showed up throughout the series from their different time periods. But I mean, I just feel like somebody should have just said, nah, there's enough going on, man. Just leave that out. But nonetheless, we're gonna roll with it. Cause it's also building up to the reveal of the Dark Phoenix and her true identity which will tell us why we got two of them running around right now. But as Maya Lopez is charging up, you got Namor and Captain Marvel pulling the symbiote off of Kid Thanos, while Odin and Thor use their hammers to pin it down. And way in the back, you got Captain America, who's like, we need fire, somebody, burn it off Thanos, give it all you got. So Lopez lets it rip, and that's it for symbiote Kid Thanos. But during all the commotion, he still managed to slip away. And there's also no sign of the Dark Phoenix. But as Iron Man comes limping towards them, he tells everyone they should spread out because she couldn't have gotten far. And Cap's like, you heard Tony, standard search pattern. But then off to the side, Tony starts to shape shift while saying, cannot stop now. I carried this fire so long, killed so many in his name. No, in my name, the fires of mystique will outburn them all. And right there, Captain America's like, well, new plan, everybody. Find Tony Stark. Because when we go back to Tony inside the cave, we find that he's defeated the Iron Inquisitor. He's got his armor back up and working as he goes on to destroy the Iron Inquisitor's armor to keep him from suiting up again. And for a moment, this Howard tries to tell Tony that he doesn't have the guts to do the things that this Howard did to him. So Tony just lets him know that it's murderers like him who claim that it takes courage to be them. But there's nothing brave about being a piece of garbage. And next, Tony finally takes Howard's hand. He takes both of them and he crushes them so that Howard won't rebuild this suit after Tony leaves him here in this cave to die. And as Tony leaves, Earth 4111 Howard Stark is just screaming for Tony to come back and finish him off, but Tony just keeps on going. And when we go back over to Mystique, we find that she's chased down the Doom Above All to give him a piece of her mind since the Masters of Evil are getting destroyed and he's doing nothing. But when she goes over to him, she finds out that he's not even there anymore. And in fact, for him, he was just using this fight as a distraction. Cause right now he's back at his castle, which is located on Doom the Living Planet. His troops are assembled and they are but moments away from their target, which is located at Infinity's End.
And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can head to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. In the next one, we'll cover the origin of the Dark Phoenix, which will clear up the whole thing about there being two different phoenixes. So stay tuned for that. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.